In this video, we discuss the need for and characteristics of a variety of programming paradigms. So let's start by understanding what we actually mean by the word paradigm. Well, it means to describe an example of a pattern or in the context of computing, to describe an example of a way of doing things. So software is written, as you know, using programming languages. As programmers, we've come to expect programming languages to include various facilities, like variables, loops, conditions, and arrays. The syntax or commands are a little different, but the underlying concepts don't really change very much. This is our programming paradigm, our way of doing things. Languages which you may be familiar with, such as Python, Visual Basic and C-sharp, come from the same family of languages. However, there are other ways of doing things. In other words, there are other programming paradigms. Most languages in most programming paradigms are said to be Turing complete. Turing complete languages can solve all problems that a computer is able to solve. So you need to ask the question now, if most languages in most paradigms can solve all possible problems, then why would we need different programming paradigms at all? Well, the answer is quite simple. Some problems are simply better suited to being solved using a certain paradigm than another. We can sort all languages into two broad categories, low level and high level. Let's first look at low level and the lowest form of language known as machine code. This is the least abstracted. It's the closest to what actually happens on a computer. Programs and machine code are directly done in binary ones and zeros. These translate into matching electrical signals. For example, maybe a one for a high voltage or zero for a low. Next, on top of machine languages came assembly languages. These made use of short code words known as mnemonics. Each mnemonic matches a specific sequence of machine code ones and zeros. In this way, it's a one to one relationship. Written in assembly language and then translated by a specific assembler. Everything above assembly languages are known as high level languages. The first languages that could go further than machine code and assembly language were developed in the early 1950s, starting with Fortran. These languages had a one to many relationship as every instruction could give rise to many lines of machine code. Because they were so much more complex, they started to be known, known as high level languages. Now, high level languages fit into two further categories in a broad sense. We have imperative and declarative. Imperative languages use statements that change a program's state in the form of sequence selection and iteration. They consist of commands for a computer to perform and focus on describing how a program operates. And these will be the languages that you've been learning. Declarative languages, on the other hand, focus on what the program should accomplish. However, these aren't covered in the specification in great detail, so we won't go into them any further. There are two main paradigms that fall under the heading of imperative languages that you need to know about for the exam. There's procedural programming and object oriented programming. Procedural programming is the one you'll probably be most familiar with. It's a type of imperative programming paradigm where a program is built for one or more subroutines, such as procedures or functions. Object oriented programming paradigms are a more modern extension of the imperative programming approach, and they focus more on a modular approach to programming. And we have a series of videos later in this series, which will go into OOP programming in more detail. So here on the screen now is a very abstracted overview of the evolution of programming languages and paradigms. So in the very early days, we had, as we've said, low level languages, including machine code, ones and zeros, 
and then assembly languages using mnemonics. Next came all our high level languages, including procedural par paradigms, Fortran and Cobalt in the 50s, followed by BASIC and C, and then more recently, object oriented paradigms such as C, Java, C, Sharp, etc. On the screen now is a nice summary of the advantages and disadvantages of machine code versus assembly language. Pause the video now and take some notes. On the screen now is a feature comparison of two of the imperative programming paradigms that you need to know about. Procedural programming on the left and object orientated programming on the right. Pause the video and take some notes. So having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What do we mean by the term programming paradigm? Thank you.